too many who know the angles Uncover and untangle All the questions and the webs left out to tangle I'll be in 1962 Last Wednesday's afternoon They'll bend your ears with reckless self-abandon The amazing spider talk The amazing spider talk Come swing through the air Sit back and prepare For the amazing spider Hello, I'm Dapper Dan Gavostin, and I'm the founder and editor of AmazingSpiderTalk.com, and I own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man, including the annuals. And I'm Mischievous Mark Chinacchio, the founder of the Chasing Amazing blog, author of 100 Things Spider-Man Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die, and I own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man, but the annuals don't count. You know what, Dapper Dan... I am sick and tired of this argument. Mark, that's that's not your line. Are you, are you talking about this annuals thing again? Relax, man. This is meant to be just fun. Fun? F- f- fun, fun for who? F- you know how difficult this is for me. I completed my collection before you, before anyone, I think. Uh, well, not Doc Spidey. And I didn't Tom DeFalco say he cl- collected every issue? Amazing Fantasy 15. Well, you know what? But then you come along and you change all the rules on me. Well, Mark, if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with annuals don't count on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. He should. Wait, what? What do you? What do a you poor say? excuse for picking a man's pocket, claiming that annuals don't count. But I suppose if you must claim to have the whole run of Amazing Spider-Man, as you do, just remember, actually, who collected every issue first? Well, you know what? I'm done. Happy holidays, Dan. Let me see you do the show without. Imagine that man thinking the annuals don't count. If the annuals don't count, then what of the existence of the Sinister Six? What of the very first Spider-Man comic created by John Romita Jr.? What of the Sinister Six reprint issue that it cost me 40 bucks to buy? I mean, that's 40 bucks. (sighs) I'm getting sleepy. Must be all the elixirs I'm consuming in the lovely bar that I named in honor of my former friend, Mark. <gasps> what was that horrible sound? It is I, your former business partner, Dan Gavastin, Stegron the Dinosaur Man. Mother said I was never allowed to show up at an annual without her being there, but now I am here, in the bar with no name, to remind you of what a miserable old fool you are. Stegron the Dinosaur Man is dead. I have seen it with my own eyes. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an undone potato. There's more gravy than a grave about you, whatever you are. Also, you're just a completely ridiculous character, and you're always talking about your mother for some reason. I wear the chain mother forged in life. Mother made it link by link and yard by yard. Mother girded it on her own free will, and of her own free will I wore it. It is the pattern strange to you? Seriously, I don't think I can do this whole Stegron thing right now. Man of the worldly mind, you believe in me or not? Okay, okay, I'm here to tell you that you will be visited by three spirits tonight. You will walk the ends of the earth one shot alongside these spirits, as I once walked the Museum of Natural History alongside Spider-Man and the Lizard. Now be gone, Dan! Good God, what does Mark keep in his beer fridge? 
Oh, hi there, puny Gavazdin. It's your old problematic friend, the ghost of Flashmas Past. Oh, man. Can this night get any worse? I don't want to get any more hate mail. Absolutely. Once you hand over that bottle of Jim Beam, about to make it the worst night of your life. Well, until that other ghost comes much later. Another ghost? No, don't worry about it, pal. Time to fly like you just snorted the anti-venom serum. And where are you taking me? We're going back to one of the old Christmas parties, hosted by your former business associate, Grizzlywig. Wait a minute. When was the Grizzly ever an associate of mine? How should I know? He's just the character that best works with the theme of this episode. Tonight is the night I have finally devoured my old critic, J. Jonah Jameson. Wait a second, this storyline never happened in an annual. In fact, I don't think it ever happened, period. Fine, 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 let's go someplace a little more specific. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. How did I end up in Europe? And why is there a smoldering cabin of a crashed plane over there? Is that the Red Skull? Did you take me to... To one of the most famous moments of annuals past. No! It's the annual that drastically changes the character of Spider-Man from an everyman who got powers to someone who had super spy parents. And a secret spy sister. Spirit, Flash, remove me from this place. I told you. These were the shadows of the things that have been. They are what they are, until the editors decide that they are it. Do not blame me, idiot. Now point me toward the door, I need to stumble out of here. I wonder who will be the next spirit to visit. Seagull! And know me better, man! Oh, hell no. I said, say I am loser. It is I, Swarm, and I am the ghost of Annual's present. I am the ghost who is here to remind you of his historic victory in the poll of the Bee Book Reviewers. Do we really need to hear about this again? Yes, my victory is always the greatest moment of the present. I absolutely destroyed Crooked Dead Whitman, and I'm currently making this podcast an Annual's great again. Have you ever appeared in an Annual ever? Yes, people were saying it was the perfect issue. The most beautiful issue ever! But then the deep state of editors and Casada tried to undo my historic appearance. So now, let's take a look at the current state of those precious annuals you love so much and claim to count. All I see right now are mediocre inventory stories and something about Ned Leeds being back, but getting killed off again a few weeks later. Exactly. That is what the annuals are now. A shell of their former selves. Just like my opponents, all losers and whiners! Spirit, tell me if the annuals will live on. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race, if the annuals be like to die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population of crappy inventory stories. Now, it's time for me to buzz off! Oh, how I fear the next spirit! There! There she is now. Excuse me. Am I to believe you are the spirit of annuals yet to come? Uh, hello. It's, um, me, Deb Whitman. I know in other versions of the Christmas Carol, the ghost of Christmas yet to come isn't supposed to talk. I guess that's why you cast me for this role, right, Dan and Mark? Cast you? Trust me, this wasn't my idea. Of course, you just planned to silence me a few years ago when I lost an election to a reanimated Nazi skeleton made entirely out of bees. Well, before you show me to the door, let me share a couple of quick facts. They say that Charles Dickens' morose themes were established in part from his heightened sense of smell, which allowed him to smell all of the rotting decay in the streets of London. Really, that that doesn't sound nice at all, or, or true. I, I don't really need to know anymore, Deb. I just... And here's another truth bomb for you. <laughs> While Dickens never defined what kind of disease Tiny Tim had, it has long been believed that he suffered from 
renal tubular acidosis, which is a type of kidney failure that causes the blood to become acidic. Well, that's just depressing. Happy New Year. Well, Deb, do you have any fun facts about the annuals? You know, like, fun ones? Uh, people stopped reading annuals years ago. The only reason Marvel continues to publish them is part of their passive-aggressive war against your podcast, where all the creators and editors pretend to have never heard of you, but then continue to write stories and make editorial decisions that appear to directly reference what you and Mark discuss on this show. Also, it looks like you and Mark will never finish season three. Because Mark stormed off and is mad at me? No. Because you've been working on this season for like two years already. I was just assuming you never finished. I don't know what to do with this information. God bless us, everyone. Mark, you're back. Thank God. You won't believe what I just had to endure. I was visited by Flash Thompson and Stegron and Swarm. Oh, and Grizzly was there. And last but definitely least, Deb Whitman. Dan, this all sounds utterly ridiculous. You've been in my basement for this whole time, and I obviously would have seen those guys if they came in. Or if they existed and wasn't just you and Aaron doing voices. But Dan, I did realize something while I was out. Annuals, they can count. Or they don't have to count. It's all about what means the most to the collector. If you want to collect all the point one issues, that's your prerogative. Of course, because the point one issues, they, they count too. Right, right. And anyway, I, I'm going to be true to my word. From now on, I'm going to be like a second father to the advocacy of annuals. I'll even let you talk about them on this show as if they mattered. Well, then it's my turn to say, God bless us, everyone, even the annuals. And remember, with great podcasts must also come... The all-new Amazing Spider Talk. This has been the Annuals Christmas Carol from all of us here at Amazing Spider Talk. Happy holidays to you and yours, no matter how you feel about the annuals. Rob, 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 Rob. <laughs> this is going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>